Right, okay. All right, uh, welcome to another Watch Pro original interview. I'm Rob Corder, and we're joined today by Jean Paul Savant, who's the CEO of Auction Technology Group, which is the parent company of thesaleroom.com, um, which uh, runs online auctions for a number of uh, auction houses and, uh, and takes those to the world. So we're gonna see how the current lockdown has affected that auction industry and see if we can get any insight into trends in terms of watch prices and directions and that sort of thing. So uh, let's, bring, let's bring in, uh, in Paul, Paul now. Nice to see you, Paul. Um, tell, tell, Paul. <laughs> maybe start off, just tell us a little bit about the, the company. It's a, a technology company, first and foremost. Yes, uh, ATG is uh, a digital marketplace. Uh, we have a single platform that powers uh, several different types of marketplaces, art and antiques being one of those, industrial and commercial being the others. And what we essentially do is we enable auctioneers from uh, around the world to list their catalogs, which they've curated on our site. And then we bring uh, bidders from 140 countries around the world uh, to our different portals and to the sale room to uh, uh, basically give those auctioneers reach that they couldn't otherwise get. Okay, so why, why would they need the saleroom.com rather than just their own, their own sites? Is it, is it mostly the sort of regional independent auctioneers rather than the global ones? Well, we, we work with a range of auctioneers in size. So um, we work with, so for instance, Bonhams lists with us. And as you know, they're one of the, one of the big four auctioneers. Yeah. Um, but we also work with hundreds of regional auctioneers. So we have about 80 to, 85 to 90% coverage of the UK art and antique auctioneers would work with the sale room. And as you said, it's, it's primarily because they have good local followings. They're known in their, in their regions, but um, with, uh, the trend towards the people attending auctions in the room, even before the crisis being down, auctioneers were looking for ways to reach a broader audience. And we bring millions of visitors to the site every year, which, which no regional auctioneer could really replicate. And so that's really why they come to us, combined with the fact that the technology that, w that we offer, which enables many different bidding formats. So bidders come to our site, they can register, they can bid live, they can bid through timed auctions, you know, similar to the eBay style. There's many different formats are accommodated. And so to get access to that technology would be very expensive for an individual auctioneer. And through us, they basically get the benefits of a, a pretty hefty uh, technology investment for a fraction of the price. And, and how have, uh, how's the business grown over, say, the last, the last three or four years? You mentioned that people are more comfortable buying online, browsing on, online. Um, how, how's that affected your business and, and the sort of wider auction world? So again, even before the crisis, we were seeing um, a steady growth in bidders and in uh, just overall share of, uh, of, I guess, an auctioneer's sales going online. And that was due to that general trend. When you think about how people are used to buying nowadays, it's, it's rare that someone is going to drive two or three hours from their home to spend time with a regional auctioneer for uh, a two or three day auction when they could bid on those same items from home for a, fr um, for a small fee. And so that's really what we've seen is, is lots of people coming uh, to the online. And as a result, the share of bidders that we bring to auctioneers has been steadily growing and the share of their overall uh, sales has been growing, uh, the online portion. So, so if we would say 30 years ago, 100% of sales or as near as down at 100% of sales were done in the sale room, what, what would the percentage through the sale room, uh, physical sale room be today, do you think? Well, today, um, it still is up uh, probably around 65 uh, to 70% is happening either in the room or on the phone. And then about 25 to 30% is online today. But obviously, with, with the crisis, uh, the auctioneers that are running auctions now, that number is you know, dramatically higher. Yeah, so, so tell me, what, what is happening today? Everybody's in lockdown. Nobody can get to sale rooms, although I'm starting to see some of it open up a little bit in Asia. Um, yeah. has, has it been a boom time for, for online auctions? Um, I wouldn't say a boom to me. It depends on the region. So in the U.S., um, the, they've kept the auctions uh, open and running and basically said you can't run physical auctions, but you can run auctions. And so we've seen a huge surge in online auctions and our share has gone up significantly and a huge amount of incremental bidder traffic beyond what we had already been bringing because even people who are a bit recalcitrant uh, to move online, the auctioneers are now saying, well, this is the only way you can bid. So you need to bid online. 
Mm. So in the U.S., we've really seen that. In, in the U.K., unfortunately, the government came out initially with a, a bit of a statement saying that auctions shouldn't be allowed because I think they were imagining um, that auctions meant lots of people in a room and they weren't thinking the fact that we can run auctions online just like eBay can. So we're pushing hard for the government to come out and publicly uh, state that uh, online auctions for regional auctioneers should be fine because otherwise it's penalizing the small businesses at the expense of the big ones like Amazon and eBay. Mm. Well, I mean, we've certainly seen some successful auctions from the likes of fellow, fellows over the course yeah. of this crisis. So it's, it's, still, uh, yeah. it's still going on. Um, yeah, there, there is some good activity. We, we probably have about 40 to 50% of the auctioneers are active and, and more are coming back in the UK um, uh, in the month of May and June, we believe. Okay. And what, what sort of results are you seeing around the world? Let's talk, I mean, I'm speaking specifically about uh, the watches industry, um, you, you, you must be, because you're a technology company, you must be very familiar with, with uh, gathering all of that data and analyzing it and noticing trends and what have you. What, what have you noticed? Well, um, it's been interesting. So we, the 300 auctioneers who list watches with us, so we have um, watches, we have about 300 in the UK, 300, 400 in the UK, and then several hundred outside of the UK as well. But they list about 80,000 watches per year with us. And while that number has remained relatively steady, the percentage that's being sold online has grown by 28% in the last few years. And so that's one trend we see. Um, the other thing is that uh, the overall number of bids happening online has grown by over 72% in that period of time. So what we're seeing is more interest in watches, and this is specifically watches because we list about 8 million items per year on the sale room. But um, with those watches, so more people are interested in them. And we've seen certain watch categories, for instance, move. So Rolex is always popular. But one of the things we've seen is that Seiko, for instance, has been rising from I think it's something like 201st to 59th on the search terms. And the reason for that is people perceive it as a slightly more affordable watch and uh, they're realizing they can access it online. And so again, that's the type of thing we tell auctioneers and share with them so they know uh, how they can price those items as well. Yeah, and I guess I guess those um, hot trend watches, we, you know, we call, we call them unicorn watches, the Daytonas, the Nautiluses, the Steel Submariners. I mean, are they as hot as ever because they've been selling at sort of double retail prices for the, for the last year or so. Is there any cooling off in those uh, very hard to get watches? We're not seeing a cooling off of that. And as you pointed out at the recent fellows auction where we helped bring a record number of bidders, it's just, there's a lot of interest in uh, whether it be for collectors or, or for people who are just sensing there's an opportunity to research things that they maybe didn't with the crisis. We're, we're seeing a, a huge surge in activity and just in the, in the past, um, 12 months, I, it, we saw 1.3 million page views of watches on our site. And so that's a number that, again, is up about 12% over the last few years. Okay. And can, can anybody get involved with the saleroom.com? If I, if I was a retailer looking to, to move some pre-owned watches, would I do it directly with the sale room or would I go to a, a Fellows or a Bonhams and, and, and move from there? So we, we, work with auction, we work with auctioneers, and so we would encourage, if somebody contacted us, we would uh, direct them to a handful of auctioneers and ask them to speak with them, and then the auctioneers work with them to curate those assets and then put them on the site. Any On the bidder side, anybody obviously can come. Uh, we have professional buyers, we have businesses, as well as a large number of uh, just regular consumers who register for the site and bid, and, and that's something we've really made a big effort around is trying to make the experience more and more familiar for people because, you know, historically people have been a bit intimidated by the thought of auctions. Walking into a room with Sotheby's or Christie's uh, can be a different experience than bidding at auction online. And, and that's what we've tried to do is make it much more uh, accessible to more people. All right. And I, and I assume you would not get involved at all in things like authentication and pricing of watches that, that would all be done at the auctioneer's level. No, we, we do have a pricing database that we make available to auctioneers at a price so they can see the way that things have trended. And, um, uh, but no, we don't get involved in valuation. Um, whenever we're asked about that, we direct people to an auctioneer. In terms of authentication, though, sometimes if, uh, you know, I think that's an important point because what really distinguishes us from, let's say, an eBay is um, everything that's sold on our site is curated by an expert auctioneer. And as a result, um, Sometimes if an auctioneer sees something on the site, they go, hey, we're not sure that's a real one. 
we have a network of people who we reach out to to say, can you authenticate what this is? Because if it's not what it says it is, then we take it off the site. And have you seen any, any, any changes to the way you've been promoting yourself to, to auctioneers and to consumers around the world? I mean, have you, have you doing a lot more social media or AdWords or is, how is your marketing changing? So I think where our marketing is changing is we used to be uh, fairly unsophisticated. We, we benefit from the fact that we, we list 8 million items per year and we've sold millions of items. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Antiques Trade Gazette, but it's been running for almost 50 years and we've written tens of thousands of articles. And as a result, we rank very highly on Google uh, based on relevance because we have content and items that we've sold and the images. So that helps us a lot. Whenever somebody searches for many terms, we, we rank very highly on natural search. So we don't have to spend a ton of marketing that way. But we do have outbound newsletters. Auctioneers pay us to target specific groups of uh, bidders. For instance, uh, watches. Um, people have bid on, uh, been browsing for watches. Um, and uh, we have been get engaging more in social media, but what we try to do is not completely bombard our audience with, uh, with, with spam. And so we're trying to find out that right interaction level that lets people get uh, become aware of everything that we're selling and at the same time respecting that they don't want their inboxes you know, crowded with a lot of junk. Mm. And, and, and finally, do you, do you think we'll see any behavioral, the behavioral changes that we're definitely seeing today? You know, everything is, everything is online effectively today. But do you think that as we come out of the lockdown, that some of the behavioral changes for, from consumers will stick medium to long term? You know, I, I really do, because um, what we're seeing is, first of all, bidders, as I said, whether it, bidders who are buying it at industrial and commercial items or art and antiques or watches, people who used to show up in the room, even the ones who didn't want to bid online are now being educated on how to bid online. And I think that just as we've seen with every other industry, when people start to uh, buy online, they find that it's pretty convenient and something that, uh, while some people may leave and go back to bidding on, in the room, I think many, many people will stay online. And so the big trends that I think you see happening is auctioneers will pay even more attention to the quality of the images and descriptions that they write, uh, delivery, uh, will be more and more important uh, because there will not be the whole option for collection as often. And um, I think the other factor is that as online becomes a bigger portion of an auctioneer's sales, they're going to dedicate more of their staff time to ensuring that that online experience is even better and, and in partnering with us. You know, we work with auctioneers all the time at what best practice is as we see it across the 2,000 auctioneers we work with uh, globally. So um, yes, I, I definitely think that the trend will move towards more online a better experience online and that there's also real operational cost savings for an auctioneer because when you run a pure online auction you don't have to have all the people moving things around you don't have to be having people watching to make sure nothing's stolen you don't have to display your items in the same way that you would have historically and so it can save auctioneers quite a bit of uh, time and money by running an online only auction as well okay great well thanks very much for that john paul it's a really interesting in insight into that uh, into that auction world uh, I wish you the best and uh, hopefully we'll see, see each other in person very soon. Great. Thank you very much. Right, Bye. You.